go. What up guys? Welcome back to another one. I want to give a huge shout out to High and Dry for sponsoring today's video. All of you guys that have been watching my public land duck hunts have seen me use this, what's called a utility pole. Uh, basically it's, it's a duck hunter's uh, best friend, especially us public duck hunters. And uh, they're giving one away here on the channel to one of y'all. All you gotta do uh, to be entered to win this bad boy is comment down below in the comment section. It's that easy. Uh, we're gonna let it run for one week, this giveaway on the channel, and then I will be picking a winner. I'm gonna send them the information and then they are gonna mail it directly to you. Very quickly, if you're interested in trying out the utility pool, use code BOB at checkout at highanddryoutdoors.com. Again, code BOB, B-O-B, uh, at checkout and you will receive just my subscribers only, a hefty discount, and for free, they're giving y'all uh, the gun loop. It's the gun loop that goes on the end of your gun. Uh, it's a $25 value, and it's what hangs your gun on the top of the pole. So, huge discount, free gun loop to hang your gun. Big shout out to High and Dry. All you gotta do, drop a comment down below. And, again, highanddryoutdoors.com. Use code BOB. These things are American made and awesome. Thank you, High and Dry. Let's get into it. Uh, no! What up, y'all? Welcome back to another one. Oh, I've been loving uh, doing these Foul Fridays here and there. They're uh, honestly a lot of fun. Um, these are the videos, these Foul Fridays like this, where I can let some stuff off my chest, um, relax, not have to work my butt off hunting, right? Um, just, just make an easy laid back video. Usually explaining something or talking about something that y'all want to hear about. So, um, or that y'all uh, want to learn about. So, if you have any ideas for Foul Fridays, it could be very sticky situations. Um, any, anything, right? Any type of subjects, let me know down in the comment section below, first of all. Bye, honey. Love you. Uh, like the last one, we did uh, boat safety. Um, my buddy up north in Alaska almost died. I let you hear his story. I explained his story a little more and you guys liked that. That was good. So that's what I want to do on these Val Fridays is uh, provide information that y'all need to hear and that y'all want to hear from me. So today is going to be about um, did we book up? How's year, year three here at Sand Hill Flyway going? Has it gotten harder, easier? Why, what, when? And big changes to come. So. I'm bringing you along, first of all, before we get into all that, we're gonna go put some corn out, check some cameras really fast, not gonna be very long, and then we'll come back, sit down, and have a chat. I'm at the edge of the driveway. I wanna get a gate, like just a simple gate, not a, not a real expensive gate, like a freaking cattle panel on a, on a chain or something. This is what I usually am doing every morning, picking up someone's freaking trash in my ditch. The reason for the gate, why I say the gate, we've had some weird, some weird ass people here lately. I'm just gonna say like that have stopped, looked, pulled in the driveway. I come walking out, they pull, but they back out real fast. I don't know about it. Ooh, that's nice. That's a chew bottle. Awesome. <laughs> I am not trying to be somber or negative in the beginning of this video. We're just starting it out together, and I'm showing you the reality of my mornings. Oh, I just picked up all this trash yesterday. There was this much yesterday. There's that. Okay, 24 hours. There we go. All right, we got beer can, smoke pack, water bottle with a chew, chew in it, another chew bottle, and we might as well add a lighter to it, you know. I was gonna add a lighter to a great collection like that. Well, back at home, got all the corning, <laughs> corning, got all the corning and uh, camera work done. It's hard to carry two bags of corn and this camera, if you know what I mean. And corning isn't that exciting, so I just decided to skip past all that. 
But yeah, man, uh, we've had a lot of weird stuff happen, honestly, um, here on the property lately. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. P people are just getting brave, I guess. Um, at one point, there's the same Explorer that I've seen um, twice. One time it pulled, pulled in my driveway. It pulled all the way back here. And by the time I heard it, it had, has like a really loud muffler. By the time I heard it, it was already pulling out past my house and got to the road and not like ran out, nothing. Next time I seen it, um, it came in halfway and I was already back here. So I walked around here like this and he was coming back, he, she, it, whatever. And it got about halfway up the road and it's, they seen me, they stopped, backed up, turned around and they were gone. You tell me. I do not play games, people. Uh, I do not play games. This man, I'm not no boy. I do not play games. This is private property. Anybody is not welcome just to drive in here, walk in here, come on my property, first of all. Um, there's another, there was another gentleman. It's been a little bit of time now, a little while back, not too long, but uh, pulled up half the drive, up halfway up the driveway, walked the rest of the way to the house. It was like nine o'clock summer night, just finally getting dark, right at dusk. And me and Bodie are playing on the floor right in front of the, uh, the front door to the house. And Bodie just looks up and he's like, he saw a ghost. This dude's just standing at our glass front door, staring at me and Bodie. And then he decided to press the doorbell when he seen Bodie staring at him. So I opened it up. Long story short, the guy was from like Michigan, I believe Wisconsin or Michigan, had went down to Texas for something. Quote, this is what he said. Went down, you know, got my way back home from Texas, going to Michigan. I'm like, he was like, you're just, you know, on the way. I'm like, I don't believe I'm on the way because I've done a drive like that before. Number one, and he was just very sketchy, man. Uh, very weird uh, and I just had to be very honest with him like man how'd you get my address and he told me he went looking for it uh, and I was like dude I'm getting ready to lay my kids down you can't just come to my house uninvited like this you know and oh I'm sorry and he was nice about it but like he had a minivan and it was stuff full of just looked like trash and you just never know right you just never know I just want to tell anybody out there if you don't like me that's fine, but do not, do not act like you're tougher than I am and you're gonna come on my property or do some vandalism or talk some BS. You, it ain't gonna work. You're gonna get dealt with, and I, and I, and I mean that. I'm a, I, I have family, I have kids, I have a wife. If you're not welcome here, you better call and you better text me, you better DM me and see if you can stop by. That's just out of respect, honestly. All right, enough drama fest. I just wanted to get that off my chest and out there. Uh, we're in the lodge. Uh, we hung up two more geese yesterday and it looks really good. Check it out. This is with all the mood lighting on. We hung that new lesser there and that new speckle belly there. It is looking freaking fresh. Like I said, here's the, here's the nice mood lighting. Sits the whole deal. Actually, it's not all on yet. Nope, not that one. That one. Yeah. Watch what it does when I turn on this big light, it all goes away. Boonk. <laughs> the mood lighting is awesome in here. The big light's nice, but it's bright. Now check it out. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's really coming together now, boys. All righty. Next thing to talk about. Lots of questions from you all. Um, a lot of people out there asking, uh, Bobby, are you booked up? You know, um, you, you guys see me and hear me uh, still plug in the lodge, um, you know, saying that we have availability. Well, I will say that, um, yes, it's been a good year. Um, as a lot of you know, our, our prices went up this year uh, to provide, and there's gonna be big drastic changes happening for next season. Um, so we start November 2nd, our first group comes in. I have, uh, I'll just run through this. So if you are interested 
and booking, you better do it now and you better hurry because these are the limited dates that we have available. November 2nd through the 5th, I have room for probably two. Uh, 6th through the 9th, I have room for four uh, to five. And then that kind of does it. November 20th through the 23rd, I probably have room for two. Um, and then we're stacked up. We're stacked up. Very limited dates, if any, um, hardly at all in December. And then January, um, looking really full, uh, pretty full, to be honest with you. Pretty full. There's, uh, there's a couple dates there that you, I could probably fit a father-son somewhere, like two father-son here, father-son there. Probably twos. Uh, I cannot fit three, four, or fives in January whatsoever. And then February, completely full. So, again, to all the haters, I always got to address these things. The people that said, oh, he's still plugging the lodge. It, didn't, it looks like he's not booking up. <laughs> Dude, come on. Come on. I'm just actually trying to top it off. Um, this season with booking has been slower. The first season was the first year out of the box, right? And, and, and the, uh, the price was much lower. Like I'm talking, I'll just be honest, it was um, roughly $450 cheaper the first year per person, right? So big changes coming. I'll get to them changes for next year. Um, so moving forward where we're at, uh, it's, it's been great, you know, it's been great. Uh, next year, the price is going to go way down. Before I get to that, I've already had to make a bunch of changes um, for this season. And it's not these changes that I've had to make, and I'm not going to go through them. Um, I'll just be honest. We have been heavy on payroll. And so heavy on payroll, we've had a lot of guys here. Those guys, they get their, their fuel paid for. Uh, they get fed last year. Um, they get room and board, right? Uh, but then, so that's one expense. All the other expenses, the, the most expensive thing that we have to do is pay for fields, pay to hunt. And I really don't have a lot of other guide service buddies, Texas, maybe, maybe they have to every now and then, Texas, South Dakota, North Dakota. There's hardly anybody out there that has to pay what we have to pay here in central Kansas. Central Kansas is so expensive to hunt. And this is what I mean. Um, there's a, there was a large waterfowl operation uh, guide service, so, so large in fact, and, the, and they charged like $4,000 a person, right? Well, they haven't been around for a little while, but what they did was they came into our area and they offered a hundred gun minimum to every farmer and every farmer had never been offered that, right? That's, that's insane. And what they were, when, what it progressed into wasn't just a hundred dollar minimum. It was a 10 man, hundred dollar minimum. So a thousand dollar minimum, even if they have six or eight guys, right? If they had 14, that's a $1,400 morning for that farmer. So they came in here with a buku amount of money and changed the game, changed the farmer's whole perception on what's a, what's a hunt worth, right? And the problem is the smaller guys like myself, it is hard to afford that. But now they've changed it and it can't go, it can't go in reverse. That's what the farmers demand. So it'll break the bank really fast. It just will. That, that, if, we wanna, if we wanna play, we gotta pay. And if we want to play on the good stuff and have those good hunts, they're going to be expensive. So $100 per person per hunt. So if I have 10 of y'all in there, that's a thousand bucks. That's just, I want to be very honest on that note. So next year, we're going to uh, cut back even more on our expenses, essentially. So we can offer a much affordable price for you guys. Next year, we probably will not offer f mills. We're gonna to have to get away from cooking three meals a day. Just gonna to have to happen. It is so stressful. If you can imagine, um, I'm not a chef. Carol's not a chef, we're not a chef. And unfortunately, this is indeed Bert, our chef, my brother. We love you, Bert. This is his last season here. As is some other guys as well, which I'm not gonna go into that yet for a reason. This is their last season because uh, 
it's their last season for them. They have other, other things going on, building families, getting married, uh, taking on more responsibility at their job, other stuff that, that now it kind of folds into where Sand Hill needs to go in the future next year. So hope you guys understand what I just blah, blah, blurted out. Uh, so <clears throat> me and Gerald, we've got it pretty figured out now. And so we just don't need that much help. So next year, um, we're probably going to, we'll provide food, hamburger, hot dogs, sandwich stuff, chips, macaroni for any of y'all to cook. There's plenty of grills and stoves and, and you can feed yourself. You can go in, in town and uh, grab a bite to eat. You can order pizza. We're right next to town. So there's everything. Um, just, I want to get to where we're a hunting lodge and we're more affordable than we are this year. A lot more affordable because I want more of you to be able to come. Just like I said about the duck shack. That's the plan next year. So if you're looking to book next year, um, you can go ahead and fill out the inquire to book form on the website um, and say that you're wanting to book for next year. And what I'll probably do is call you and I'll put you on a list, um, on a booking list for next year. So no meals next year, no, no provided cooking. There will be food here for y'all, but just moving forward, we need to go down in price for y'all and we need to have less stress for us because the hunting is, it's abundant, but it's expensive. And the fuel now with diesel trucks is expensive. I thought about buying myself a little Jetta that gets 38 miles to the gallon. I think it'd be worth it. Uh, but other than that, that, that's the rundown. Those are the big changes for next year. Um, if Sand Hill, if I can't be profitable here, if Sand Hill can't profit at the end of the season, why am I doing it, right? If, if it's not profiting in the bank account for me and my family, why am I doing it? So we got to make it doable and we got to make it more abundant for me and Gerald. First of all, first of all, me and Gerald are the two most important people here and we're going to be here forever. And it's up to us to make sure that we are sustainable and that we can make a good profit for all of our hard efforts and be excited for the next year. And that's important to me. He, Gerald's my brother and I, I got to make sure I take care of him first and foremost. Whew. But that's kind of, kind of the gist of it all today on this here Foul Friday. I know you guys have liked these Foul Fridays where I just get to sit back, bleh, let it all out, right? No matter what, what it's about. And, and I appreciate that. It shows me uh, that I have so many of my long-term viewers here and subscribers that are still here. And thank you guys for hanging around. Um, if you guys are interested in booking a hunt though, sandhillflyways.com. Fill out that booking form. I'll get a hold of you. If you want to sign up for next season, do it now. Because the earlier you do it now, the sooner you're going to be called next year, which will in turn give you a lot better dates. Next year, we will be priced in between $1,500 a gun and $1,750 a gun. I don't know where it's going to fall, but it's not going to be up around $2,000. It's not, it might be $1,500 like the first year we started out. And, and that's pretty affordable for three days of hunting, full lodging, right? So let me know. Get a hold of me. Uh, thank you, guys. Be safe out there. I hope that all of you are having an amazing early season. Uh, all of y'all up in Canada have been absolutely cracking them. It looks like uh, the snow goose hatch was pretty good. So I'm excited to possibly be doing some conservation hunts at the end of my fall season in February. So be on the lookout if you're interested in that. It might become a thing. <coughs> Bless me. It'll be one of those things if I offer conservation snow goose hunting, um, I'll open up the availability way later on in the fall once I know that the conservation hunting is going to be worth it and good for you guys. But subscribe if you haven't. Hit that little notification bell down there. There's like 50% of y'all that still haven't done it. Thank you guys, but until next time. I don't need your criticism, pessimism. I've been keeping it on the DL. Got a girl that